In this video, we will see how to edit sport activity on a Garmin Tactics or a Garmin Phoenix. Uh, to start an activity, of course, you go on the Start Stop button and then you select an activity. It can be an activity from that top list or you can go lower to find other activities or even add other activities and choose among all of these activities. But for this example, I'm going to select uh, hiking. So let's start a hike. And as you can see, that page has already been modified. That's my actual hiking page that I use when I'm hiking. Uh, but if you want to modify it, as you can see at the beginning, before you start the activity, you can press the up button. You see the up arrow. You see just right here, the arrow, up arrow uh, with the option, uh, which bring us to those option. But I don't want to show it to you into uh, that page because uh, once you start the activity, the up arrow is not is no longer available and I want to show it to you in a way you can always reach it and it's by holding the up button. We're gonna see everything of it and you'll see there's a lot of things uh, we can do but let's start with the Ike settings. The first thing we have is the data screens. This will be uh, probably 90% of the video, the data screens. Uh, you see, when we select it, uh, it brings us to uh, the same page as we had at the beginning. Uh, that's all the screen I have for this activity with, with what I have choose to have uh, as page. And I can add new one if I want. Uh, if I want to modify what I have on this first screen, I can press the uh, pen button just right here. And uh, I can change the layout or change the data fields or reorder the data fields or the page in fact this will reorder the page it was actually the first one i can i can set it to the second third or what i want uh, what i mean by that is that you see now it's the first page and when i was moving it to the second it was moving it at this place and moving up this one to uh, this first page there is a lot of option uh here uh, we can change the layout so actually i have one two three four five six seven eight uh, data on the same screen i can change it to uh, other type of page to reorder everything and the quantity of info i want to have on the same page do i want to save it no i like my uh, actual page um and there is a data field so you see this one is actually uh, the time of the day. So if I want to change it, I can select it and choose among all the other fields. We will see all of them a little later. I can also go to another with the up and down button. So if I want to change the elevation, well, now I can choose to have a speed field and uh, let's say I want to have the average speed and then I would select to uh, change it, but I want to keep my elevation. Uh, now we will see all of the data fields because because if I want to add another page, for example, I will go at the very bottom with the down button and select with the start button. So what do I want as a screen? Do I want custom data? HR Gauge, virtual par partner. We will see that later. Uh, let's say custom data. So from here, I can choose the layout I want. Do I want only one information to three three with no lines and no information just big blocks uh four let's say let, let's go with that one three fields and now since it's a new page uh, the way we will input the information inside is a bit different than when uh, we modify it as you can see now i edit the first uh, data fields so let's say I want to put a timer field. I want the, I want a timer. I want that the second one would be uh, the distance. So the distance I travel, and the last one will be um, 
elevation field and total ascent. We will see the definition a little a little a little later. And then we can choose where we want to have that screen. Uh, let's put it at the bottom because I will delete it at the end. Um, okay, so now if I want to modify it, uh, I want to I want to want to do it that way because we will see in real time what will happen here on the screen. Uh, so data fields. What do I want? So let's go with the first uh, available data. Timer fields. What do we have into timer fields? Uh, so if I want something in timer fields, I select it and then I felt into a sub menu. So I can have the timer. So the timer is the time since the beginning of the activity. I can have the lap time. So if you're working with a uh, lap, uh, you know, you can press the lap button just right here to reset that timer and distance of the lap every uh, time. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, there's the last lap time. So let's say you're working on uh, two minute laps uh, and uh, at the end you press the lap button and then while staying running, cycling or whatever, you want to see what was the time of the last lap. Well, this field will always show the last lap time. The average lap time, so let's say you uh, do a two kilometers lap, you do them in uh, eight minutes, and you want to know uh, the average lap time uh, since the beginning, well, that's the information you will have. Elapse time, uh, this one is a bit like the timer, but if you pause the activity, this one will keep counting. So if, for example, you run for 10 minutes and pause five minutes and then run five more minutes, well, the timer will be 15 minutes at the end, but the elapsed time will be 20 minutes. Multi-sports time. So if you change sport, uh, this one will keep continue counting uh, the time since the beginning of everything. The moving time, well, this is a timer that counts only when you are moving. So if you're running and need to stop because there's a red light, this will pause uh, the time. The stop time, so well, this, this will be the time you pass at, this, at the red light. The overall ahead behind, uh, this will only work if you are on the route and have a time uh, specification. So let's say you are on a 100 kilometers ride and you want to ride at 20 kilometers per hour in average, but uh, you actually cycling at 30 kilometers per hour in average. So it will tell you how much time you have ahead of your 20 kilometers uh, target. So this will let you know if you have to ride faster or you can stop at the next convenience store to buy something, drink and relax. And the timer. So we get back to the beginning. Uh, again, if you want to select it, you can just select it and that's done and you can pass to the next information. But actually, I want to modify it and we will go into the distance field. So this is the distance. Uh, in kilometers or miles, depending of uh, how you set your watch. Uh, the lap distance, the last lap distance, again, it's the same thing as the time, the nautical distance, and the distance again. Those one was pretty obvious. The pace field, so uh, your pace, then we've got the average pace, the lap pace, the last lap pace, and uh, we restart. Uh, then we've got speed fields. So your actual speed in kilometers per hour or miles per hour, depending on how you set your watch, the average speed, the lap speed, last lap speed, maximum speed. This one will indicate the, the highest speed you have been into this activity. The nautical speed, the maximum nautical speed, the average nautical speed, the average moving speed. So this one will count uh, 
the average of your speed but only when you are moving so this will not decrease like crazy if you stop at a red light uh, the average overall speed this one is interesting it's the same principle as with the timer uh, the average overall speed will keep counting your average speed even if you pause the activity so if you stop at a convenience store to buy something to drink or to eat and you pause the activity while you are inside your average speed will continue to be uh, counting the vertical speed so the vertical speed is uh how much meter you climb per minute and that was pretty much it for the speed field then we've got the earth rate fields uh so the actual earth rate earth rate gauge uh, you see here there is the color at the top uh, this is the zone so zone one two three four and five uh, so it will tell you your earth rate and in which uh, zone you are actually the screen is big enough so we can have uh, those uh, gauge but if you are on like a nine data fields layout and the, the the icon is too small to uh, get those five icons you will get the earth in, in the color of the gauge so if it's yellow you will know you are in zone three and if it's red you will know you are in zone five then we've got the average hearth rate the hearth rate zone uh, so again it's the same principle as those gauge and actually i know that at 0 0.7 i didn't reach the first uh zone so i'm under the first zone uh, aerobic training effect um, this is probably something more for athlete uh, the aerobic training effect is the impact of the current activity on your aerobic fitness level I never use that stuff and the anaerobic training effect is a bit the same principle it's the impact of the current activity on your anaerobic fitness level see the links in the description uh, I may give you some uh, lecture to uh, to have more information about it uh, the training gauge is the exact same thing as we have seen before with those two but uh, merged together uh, the max earth rate percentage max okay this one is a bit funny let's put this on paper the max earth rate percentage so if your earth rate is at 180 and your maximum is 200 well you are at 90 percent however if we look at this one the uh, the percentage of the heart rate reserve uh, this is a bit different um, let's say for example that your minimum heart rate is 50 and your maximum earth rate is 200 still so if your earth beat is at 180 you are in fact 130 above your minimum earth rate so in fact you are at 130 above your minimum and your maximum is 150 above your minimum so you are at 130 on 150 and and this doesn't do 90 percent it does 86.6 percent so it's a bit different then what we have average hearth rate max so this will be your average hearth rate expressed in percentage instead of hearth beat and this one is with the hearth rate reserve as we have seen a couple seconds ago your lap hearth rate so it's an average your lap percentage hearth rate reserve and again it's still the same thing but expressed into lap this one is for the last lap again same info and then we've got the time in zone so actually this will show you the time in zone one and if you want to see the other one you select it 
and then you select the zone you want to see the time so if you're going out and you and your goal is to achieve 30 minutes in zone 4 well you will want to put that zone 4 here and then you go ride run hike or whatever you want and this will tell you how much time you have passed into that hearth rate zone next one now we've got cadence so cadence depending of the sport you are doing it may be the rotation of your foot on a bike or the number of step you do uh, so well that's the cadence in average in lap in last lap cadence gauge and yeah that restart then we've got temperature field so this will give you the actual temperature the 24 hour maximum and the 24 hour minimum Then we've got the elevation fields. That's a funny one. Uh, the average ascent. The average ascent will be uh, the number of meter you climb per minute in average. And it only counts while you are climbing. Then the average descent is the same thing, but for the descent. The maximum ascent will be the fastest speed you have climbed since the beginning of the activity. So if at some point you were in a very, very steep environment and were climbing very, very fast, well, uh, probably your max ascent will be maybe at 20 or 30 uh, meters per minute. That's the same thing for descent. And then we've got the actual elevation. The total ascent will be the number of meter you will have climb since the beginning of the activity so let's put it on paper let's say you start climbing at uh, 100 meter and then you climb up to 200 meter and then go down here at 150 and then go up here at 300 well you have climb 100 meter here then you go down that doesn't count and then you go up again at 300 meter so you climb 100 plus 150 so you climb 250 meter so that is for the total ascent then we've got the total descent into this activity the total descent at this point is only 50 meters then we've got the lap ascent the lap descent the last lap ascent last lap descent the minimum elevation so in this case the minimum elevation is the lowest point you will have b so this would be 100 meter and on this one the maximum elevation well this would be the highest point you would have reached so this would be 300 meters so when you were climbing at this point it would have say 200 meters and then you would have go down and it would still have said 200 meters until the point you reach 201 and then up to 300 the GPS elevation is your elevation based on the GPS only. So this one doesn't count with the barometric uh, elevation. Then you've got the total ascent and descent gauge. So if you don't want to have it on separate screen, you can have both of them just right there. Uh, the glide ratio, this one is interesting. Let's say um you are climbing a mountain just like this and this is um one kilometer uh 10 kilometers and this is one uh kilometer so it will tell you the horizontal distance you need to travel 
to uh, get vertical distance. So in this example, if you start here and end just right here, uh, it will tell you 10 on 1. So it would tell 10, 1. You travel 10 kilometers in horizontal to gain 1 kilometer, 10, 1. Then we've got the grade, that's the percentage grade of the hill you are right now. And that was the last feature for the elevation fields. The next one is the compass field. So this one will tell you in which direction you are heading, zero being uh, the very north. And 90 degree would be uh, east 180 would be soft and 270 would be west that's heading uh, the gps heading well uh, the gps heading will will need the gps of course to tell you in which direction you are going but also will need uh, you to move uh, we'll see the next one you will understand the compass heading will tell you in which direction you are heading based on the compass. So if the watch point in that direction, well, that's the direction the watch point. But if you go on GPS heading, if you are pointing straight to the north, but moving to the east, it will tell you that you are heading east at 90 degree. So here I'm pointing north, just like that, because I am actually pointing north. But if I move with the GPS heading to east, it will tell me 90 degree. If I move straight to the east, even if I'm pointing north. About the uh, heading, well, this one is a bit of an automatic mode. So if you are not moving, it will give you the uh, compass heading. And if you are moving, it will give you the GPS heading. So heading generally work the best. And then you also have the uh, gauge compass. So this one will only be with the compass and will add this uh, pretty nice uh, graphic on it then next one is the navigation fields for these info to work you will need to be into uh, navigation this means you will have to be on the route or to have activate navigation to a certain point so this one will tell you the distance remaining uh, until the end of the route uh, the estimated total distance will be, um, so let's say uh, you're here, you start your uh, travel and you follow that road, that going here, there, finally there, and that road is 10 kilometer. So at the very beginning of the activity, the estimated total distance would be 10 kilometers but you're walking and when you reach uh, that place just right here you realize that hmm there's a lake just right here and that seems fun so uh, you go all around of the lake come back here and keep going here and that lake is uh, five kilometers to go all around so when you read when you come back to that point well it will tell you that well okay still it remain uh, seven kilometers for uh, the rest of uh, the the trip but since you did five kilometers more here and it remains seven kilometers here. Well, finally, uh, the estimated total distance will be 15 kilometer. So that's the 
estimated total distance. Then we've got velocity made good. This is the speed at which you are moving to uh, your final point. I don't know who is using this, but that's what it is. The vertical speed to the target, so it's, so it's basically the same things, but uh, expressed in vertical speed instead of horizontal. Bearing is uh, the direction you need to go in straight line to reach your objective. So let's say you start here and then uh, this is your path and the final point is here and at some point you are here then the bearing will tell you you will need to go into that direction to reach your final point in straight line. Course is the direction from your starting location to a destination. Then we've got off course. This, this one is actually very interesting. So let's come back to that drawing and say uh, you start moving here. Well, of course, we'll tell you that you need to go left for, uh, let's say, 0 0.5 kilometers to go back to uh, the course. So it will tell you you are, uh, of course, of 0 0.5 kilometers and you need to go left to go back to the route. That's a pretty handy feature. Uh, then we've got the vertical distance to the destination. So basically how much meter left you have to climb to reach your destination. Then the glide ratio to your destination. So it will tell you if you have more to climb or more to uh, travel in horizontal to reach the destination. The glide ratio is what we have seen a little bit earlier. Remember this one? That's the glide ratio. Well, it will tell you what will be the glide ratio from, from the point you are right now to the point you are going. This will be your actual location. So your longitude latitude, the destination location. And again, we have latitude and longitude. So what's the difference between this one and this one? Well, this one will be your location in the system format you have chosen. And this one will always be in WGS84. Then we've got the ETA, so estimated time of arrival. So the point you have select to be your destination at what time you will arrive. And then we've got the ETE. So this is how much time you have left to travel. Yeah, let's do an example of this one on paper. So let's say that you are here and it's nine o'clock and you want to travel there. Well, the ETE is the estimated time you still have to travel between that point and that point. And let's say that for this case, the ETE is two hours. So if it's nine o'clock and the estimated time remaining to travel is two hour, the ETA, estimated time of arrival, is 11 o'clock. Uh, this one will show the last point on the route to the destination. And this one will uh, be the next waypoint. So uh, basically that's the name of uh, the waypoint and that's the distance to the next waypoint or the estimated time of arrival to the next waypoint. Uh, what's a waypoint? Uh, let's bring back this wonderful draw. When you do a course, uh, at some point you have waypoint. So there could be the A, the A waypoint here, the B waypoint here, C, D and E. So this would tell you that the last waypoint is E and uh, 
let's see, we are here, the next waypoint is A, then B, then C, and so on. So the time remaining to the next waypoint and the distance remaining uh, for all of the course. And that's all for the navigation. Then we've got the muscle oxygen field. Oh, those are... <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, you're, I never used those one, but, well, it says what it have to say. Uh, if you want to read more about uh, those one, uh, you can uh, go into the description and I will link you uh, to a page that explain all of the uh, point. Then we've got the other fields, so the calorie burn since the beginning of the activity, the battery percentage, the battery hours remaining the gps signal so uh, the quality of your gps signal the number of laps you have done the sunrise time which is the next sunrise uh, occurrence then you've got the sunset time and the time of the day the ambient pressure and the barometric pressure uh, this one is the uncalibrated one and this one is the calibrated one so that's the lecture the watch does and that's the actual uh, barometric temperature calibrated. That's the number of steps since the beginning of the activity. The load is the training load of the current activity. So the training load is the amount of excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, more known as EPOC which indicate the strengthness of your workout. Uh, actually, I was just reading the page I was telling you that is into the description. I never use that stuff. And your respiration rate is the number of breath you take per minute. And then we've got a graphical. Uh, so maybe we have seen some of them into the previous uh, page. Uh, that's the cadence gauge that we already have seen, the earth rate gauge, the, this one also. Uh, we all have seen those one. And we've made the tour. So what's next? <laughs> um, I want to remove that page because I've just made it uh, for for you. What do we have else? Oh no, I forget. Uh, there might have other uh, type of uh, data fields. So if, for example, I go on running uh, and I want to change, uh, oops, here, run settings, and I want to change the data screens, let's say, of uh, this one. Uh, there is some other data fields that you uh, might see in some sport. Uh, run dynamics. You will only find those one into a run activity. Uh, you've got the vertical oscillation, but uh, to, to have those run dynamics, you will need uh, some, some other peripheric that you will uh, need to uh, pair with the watch because the watch will not uh, see this. Uh, but the vertical oscillation is uh, the number of centimeter while you are running that you are constantly going up and down. And yeah, I, I never use uh, those one, but uh, if you want to read more about it, uh, there is the link in the description. But there is a lot of things you can uh, see into that one. And you've got also... If I go back, oops, if I want to bike, to bike settings, data screens, modify this one and data fields, you might also see gears. <laughs> If you want to know on which gear you are but again you will need a special uh, gear and 
yeah, you have some inform you you have some more information that you may find into some activity. But let's go back to that hike. Um, there is some other type of screen you can have. So if I go in hike setting, data screens, uh, you see this is some data screens. Uh, that's the compass screen. You've got the map screen and you've got the elevation screen that will draw a graph of the elevation you are going to into your activity and you can add some other screen. What do we have? We got the HR gauge. So that's just a big HR gauge. If I don't want it, I can remove it. If I want to add another one, uh, you got the virtual partner. That's a funny one, uh, but we will see it a little later. You can add a music control page if you want to control your music. Uh, basically, that's uh, the music application. And um, if you have music into your phone, you will be able to uh, select it with uh, that application or you can also control your phone music with uh, that feature. Um, or got the clock. So a simple clock. That's all the screen we had. Uh, what else do we have into option? Uh, there's the power mode. Power mode, uh, what it is. Uh, actually, on this power mode, we've got the uh, GPS, GLONASS, the earth rate. It is connected to the phone and it can play music. So it says we have 36 hours of battery. But if you want to go with more battery, you can cut the phone, the music, the earth rate, and you will have 74 hours of battery. Or you can go in jacket mode, which is basically the same thing as this one, but it won't monitor your earth rate jacket mode because you will put the watch over a jacket and not your wrist directly. So if you want to save battery, you can go here before you start an activity. Training. Uh, that's a funny one. Uh, if you want to do workout, you can download workout, workout on Garmin Connect, but you can also set target and that's a virtual companion that as we have seen a little earlier, that's the way I will uh, make it show up if I want to use it. So you can have a distance target. So let's say you want to uh, hike four or five kilometers and then you want to go back. So it will tell you once you, you will have reached that five kilometers so you can uh, come back down. Uh, you, and, and you got distance and time or distance and speed. Uh, basically, let's, let's say a distance and time. Uh, so let's say I want to um, I want to uh, hike for 10 kilometers, and I want to do it um, into whoops. Want to do it into two hours and a half. So that's my goal. So I have 10, 10 kilometers of target and I want to do it in two hours and a half because, uh, well, I know that I have 10 kilometers to do to reach my goal and in two hours and a half, it will be uh, sunset. So it tells me just right away that I need to go at an average speed of four kilometers per hour. So I accept this and it will take me to that page. Uh, I said I want to do 10 kilometers, so right away it's able to tell me uh, the estimated finish time. So if I go uh, faster, it will tell me that uh, the finish time will be, let's say, two hours instead of two hours and a half. And you see the green arrow is you, and the gray one at the back is your ghost. So they will move on the screen to tell you if you are ahead or behind uh, your ghost that goes always at four kilometers per hour and never stop. 
So if you walk at six for an hour, well, you will have some minutes to uh, slow down, relax, and just never let your ghost go ahead of you. So that's a virtual partner. Oops. Do we have something else in here? Uh, training, set a target, race and activity. Oh, that's a funny one. Let's say that last week, uh, go from history, uh, on May 17, I did a hike of 17.77 kilometers and I did it in seven hours and 45 minutes. And let's say that today I want to go do that exact same hike and I want to do it faster. Uh, I can just select this one and it will let me raise my activity. But be aware, uh, it doesn't count if you run or stop at some point. You remember uh, if I come back here, oops, go in option, training, race and activity from history. Uh, it says that I've done 17.77 kilometers at uh, into this time, so that create an average speed, and the ghost will go at this average speed. So you just have to make sure you stay in front of your ghost. But but that's a very very great feature. Uh, or you can also download the activity. And a training calendar, well, I don't have one, so there's nothing to show yet into that. The navigation field is uh, something we will see into another video. Uh, is there something we need to look at onto that? No, I think we've done the tour of how to set up an activity uh, page with all the options that come with it. Yeah, so once you're ready, you start the activity with the start button and go have some fun. So, this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope it helps. If yes, please smash the like button. If you are planning to buy this watch, you can see my link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you need help. If you want to see my other tutorial about this watch, you can see my playlist just right here. And you can also find me on my main channel just right there. Thank you for watching. Take care. <laughs> see ya.